At this time, we will observe the Lord's Supper. We'll be looking at a passage from the scripture to prepare our hearts. Uh, men will distribute Bibles to any who might need them. If you need one, raise your hand. We're going to be looking this morning at Malachi chapter 3, verses 16 through 18. Malachi wrote this prophecy more than 400 years before Christ was born. He was the last of the writing prophets before John the Baptist appeared on the, on the scene. Many Jews had returned to Jerusalem after 70 years of captivity in Babylon. They had rebuilt the temple and they were carrying on a form of worship even though their hearts were really not in it. The uh, priests were despising the name of the Lord by offering defective animals and God was just not pleased with them and he said, I will refuse to accept your, your sacrifices. He says, my name will one day be great among all nations. And here his people who are called by his name were despising his name. They were profaning the Lord's name by saying the table of, of the Lord is defiled and my, how tiresome it is. Not only had the priest turned away from God's way, but they were not in instructing people in God's word. The people were stumbling and straying. Some were divorcing their Jewish wives and marrying Gentile wives. They were also robbing from God by not bringing their tithe to the temple. God says, from the days of your fathers, you have turned aside to my, from my statutes and have not kept them. Return to me and I will return to you. He continues with a promise, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house and test me now in this, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you blessings until it overflows. But in the midst of the spiritual apathy and disobedience is a bright spot. People, there are people there who fear the Lord and who esteemed his name highly. Follow along as I read from Malachi chapter three, verses 16 through 18. Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another and the Lord gave attention to them and heard it. A book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and who esteem his name. They will be mine, says the Lord of hosts, on the day that I prepare my own possession, and I will spare them as a man spares his son who serves him. So you will again distinguish between the righteous and the wicked, between him who serves God and the one who does not serve him. In contrast to the prevailing religious climate, these people feared the Lord. They were departing from sin, keeping God's commandments, they esteemed the name of the Lord. They gave him his proper due. Trust, they were treating him as holy and majestic, as one who is worthy of proper worship. Notice that they spoke to one another often. They were people of one mind in their devotion to the Lord. They were living in a time when wicked seemed to prosper and people saw no benefit in serving the Lord. But notice that the Lord takes notice of these people. He gave attention to them and listened to them. And a book of remembrance was written for them. Not that the omniscient God needs a book to remember them, but it gives promise that in the future day, they will be his special treasure. And he will he'll spare them in the day of judgment when he judges the wicked. The idea is that they're his special treasure. And finally, God says, you will again distinguish between the righteous and the wicked, between the one who serves God and the one who does not serve him. In that day in which they were living, the, it, this distinction was not clear. Notice in verse 15 that they called the arrogant people blessed, and the doers of wickedness were not only built up, but they, they were uh, testing God and escaping. But the day is coming when the, they'll see the difference. Look at verses 1 and 2 in chapter 4. 
A fiery day of judgment is coming when the arrogant and the evildoer will be like chaff burned in the fire. But those who fear the Lord, for them, the son of righteousness will be, rise with healing in his wings. This is a picture of the Messiah who will reward his people. The joy of his people is described as calves just re released from a stall. They run and jump as they experience their newfound freedom. This morning, as we partake of the Lord's Supper, we also are showing esteem for our Savior. We remember his body nailed to the cross for our sins when we partake of the bread. And when we drink of the cup, we remember his blood poured out on the cross to redeem us from our sin. We do this corporately with others who have been redeemed. The Lord also remembers us. Our names have been written in the Lamb's Book of Life since the foundation of the world. He marked us out as his own when he sealed us with his Holy Spirit of promise, a down payment which is assurance that in the day when he makes up his possession, we will be there, we will be his. We, will, we also fear the Lord, and that's why we examine ourselves and turn from our sin for which Jesus paid such a price. The fear of the Lord is to depart from evil. We also look forward to the day when we, he shall come again. We remember his promise that he will come again to receive us to himself and that he, in the coming ages, he will show the surpassing riches of his grace and, and kindness toward us. All who have been redeemed are welcomed to partake of the Lord's Supper. But if you've not come to trust in Christ alone for your salvation, we ask that you do not partake. The Lord established this ordinance for those who are his followers. We ask that you consider this. Christ's death on the cross is the only means that God has provided for your salvation. Only through faith in Christ can you be made right with God. To seek some other way to be acceptable to God is an affront to God. It only leads to destruction. Please give heed to God's command, repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins. The men will serve the elements now and you may partake when your heart is prepared. <clears throat> 